when we first started Martha Stewart Living, uh, we used to joke that you had to know the definitions of tweel, tool, twall, toll, and toil. Today, we're going to talk mostly about tweel, those paper-thin cookies that are named after the French roof tiles. We're going to learn how to make the simple tweel. You're going to learn about the crispy, nutty, lacy tweel that you can serve with a sorbet or an ice cream, the brandy snap tweel that forms a lovely cup, and the cigarette tweel that can be dipped in chocolate, and of course, the ubiquitous fortune cookie that wonderful, very thin tweel that's folded around your fortune. You're gonna learn all of these today on Martha Bakes. Today, we're going to talk about tweel, those paper thin cookies that can be formed into many different shapes that are absolutely delectable. I'm going to make the basic tweel batter. This is a batter that has to be chilled, so if you're going to make these for tonight, make this early in the morning. Start by sifting the dry ingredients. Now, it's an unusual combination of dry ingredients. Two cups of confectioner's sugar, and we're gonna sift that because there's lots of lumps in confectioner's sugar. One and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Throughout this whole show, we're using Hecker's flour and one and a quarter cups, don't forget the quarter cup. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Just an eighth. So sift these into a large bowl and then whisk it around a little bit. See all the lumps? You really have to get that through a sieve. And we're gonna actually put this through another sieve after we make the batter because you want it really smooth elegant batter, creamy batter, uh, to make these very delicate cookies. Now make a well in the center, and into the well put your wet ingredients, which are six large egg whites, just whisked up with a balloon whisk. You wanna break up the whites so that they're light and fluffy, but they don't have to be really beaten. There, just like that. That way they will go right into the well. One teaspoon of best vanilla. 10 and a half tablespoons of melted and cooled butter. Just pour that right into your well. One tablespoon of heavy cream. Gently whisk these ingredients together. Now by mixing the wet into the dry in this fashion, you're gradually adding the dry ingredients. Look how nice and creamy and smooth and with very little effort. And now you're going to run this batter through another sieve and chill it for at least two hours and overnight is fine. Let's cover this with plastic wrap. Use it within two days of making though. And now for forming the tweel. We're gonna make long cigarettes and we're also gonna do a leaf tweel. I find that the easiest way to make them is to find these flexible cutting boards and the templates are on marthastewart.com. So cut out your rectangle and you can make tweel pretty much any shape. And then you cut out the oval itself. What you want to be left with is that and the batter is gonna be spread very thinly. You'll need just one mold for the leaf and one mold for the oval. Tweel, because of the thinness and the uh, inflexibility of them, you have to bake them on a silpat. And to form the cookies, put about a two thirds of an ounce of dough right here in the center, and then just very carefully spread it in the mold. Scrape off the excess, and there will be a little excess, and just spread it. You don't want any bubbles or holes. Now lift up your mold, and look, you have the perfect oval. It's like magic. And just continue. I can get four on this silpat. And the leaf, well, it's the same kind of technique. You can use a little bit less batter because it's a smaller cookie. Then use a smaller offset spatula for spreading the dough in the leaf shape. Lift this up, 
and continue across the sill pad. This template has allowed us to make four perfect ovals on our sill pad, place it carefully in a cookie sheet, and bake at 375 degrees in a preheated oven. Put these into the same oven for six to seven minutes. So here are our beautiful leaves. And we want them to have a little shape, so we're going to roll them carefully on a pin. This will give them a curve, and they'll look very pretty when they harden up. And they set up very fast. If you can't get them to bend, then you can put them back in the oven for a second to warm the batter. Let them dry, cool, then you can move them into an airtight box until you're ready to use them. Now I'm going to show you how to form the beautiful cigarettes. So I'm just loosening them with an offset spatula. Be very careful. They're very hot at this point. And then roll around a pencil. You want a nice tight roll. These are so thin and so elegant. And work right on the sill pad because that will enable you to form the shape you want. And then you lift off, just let cool on a rack. And we're gonna dip these right into chocolate, just the ends. Now I have some melted chocolate and just dip the end in like that and let it hang over the edge of a rack. You can dip these into crushed nuts, but I like them without nuts. This is what they look like if you dip them in nuts. So they're very pretty too. So now let me just show you how you can use these beautiful twill for a dessert. Three scoops of ice cream, not very large scoops, and you can just place a pretty twill leaf or two on the bowl. Now that's a dessert. This is a vanilla ice cream in a tall glass rich and creamy. And you can use one of your beautiful chocolate twill cigars. Maybe I'll put one with, an, with nuts in it too, just like that. Now I'm gonna show you how to make lacy nut cookies. These are a twill also. Two and a quarter cups of confectioner sugar, two, and you sift that right into the bowl of your mixer. These are a nice cookie, and the reason we're making this cookie is because you can make a roll, put it in the fridge or in the freezer, and then cut them and bake them. So here we have the sugar, two sticks of butter, that's a half a pound, plus five tablespoons. And this is at room temperature, and this gets mixed right with the flat beater. Add a quarter of a cup of light corn syrup. See how nice and creamy that is? That's excellent. And then we're going to add one and a quarter cups of bread flour. Bread flour is made from hard wheat. It has a little of the outer bran in it. It is a tougher flour with more gluten than an all-purpose flour. And it tastes really good in these cookies. And then have one and a quarter cups of chopped sliced almonds ready to add to the batter. I do that just to make sure that everything is incorporated. There we have our dough. Scrape down your bowl and take a half sheet pan of parchment paper and spread out your dough. You see, it's way, way too soft to do anything with right now. Spread this out all the way to the end and you want it equals in diameter all the length. And what you're trying to do is form an 
equal sized log. Yeah, very nice. And we are using a paper towel cardboard, which will help keep the log straight while it is chilling. You can just put the log right inside. See, isn't that a good idea? Chill. Here's when it's chilled. This is what it looks like when you unwrap it. So nice. Cut these into quarter inch slices. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you're ready to bake. So we have some that are in the oven. They've been baking for approximately nine minutes. Look how pretty these are. Let them cool. They're still very soft, but they're the perfect color. Once cooled, they can be stored in an airtight container for up to a week, or you can freeze them. They're a very nice addition to any cookie repertoire. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a brandy snap cup in which you can serve sorbets. It's a very elegant dessert, and it's very easy to make. So in a pan like this, this is a heated batter. There's no chilling it. You just make it and bake it. Into here, add a half a cup of sugar just granulated sugar, a third of a cup of molasses, and I use grandma's molasses or Br'er Rabbit molasses, just a nice supermarket molasses. I love the taste of molasses, and it adds a real richness to the brandy snaps. And brandy snaps are called brandy snaps because they actually have brandy in them, cognac. So make sure you have some cognac on hand. And it is exactly two tablespoons of cognac. And one teaspoon of orange zest from a bright skinned orange like this. Quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And eight tablespoons of butter, a whole stick. And you can cut that up a little bit which will speed up the melting of the butter. What we want to do is stir this over a low flame, and we just wanna heat this until the butter is melted. And when it comes to a boil, take it off the flame. Look at that, see how bubbly it is? While it's still very, very hot, stir in one third of a cup of flour. All purpose is fine. Stir that in until it's completely dissolved. And believe it or not, that's your batter. Brandy snap batter. Mm, smells great. Now this is very important. Don't bake these close together because they spread like crazy. Um, and it's one heaping tablespoon. There's one, two. And so I'm gonna do two trays at a time. I'm gonna start this one, and then in about four minutes, start the next tray. It takes about 10 to 12 minutes per tray. So time yourself because you have to work with the batter while it's very hot. So I'll form the next ones. And you just then use the same sheet again and again and again until you're done with all of these. There. Now, this is what they look like when they first come out of the oven. They're bubbly and very thin and very, very soft. And if you try to move them here, you will not get anywhere. It'll just be a blob. So just wait about three minutes or so. Now, this is not the time to answer your telephone uh, or read your email or uh, go to the door for the UPS man or the postman. Just let them wait because these will harden up all of a sudden and then just be a flat round. It was not what you want. We're trying to make these gorgeous cups in which we're going to serve fruit sorbets. They're just starting to firm up. That's when you wanna pick it up and put it over a form. The large muffin tins or a shape like this cup, that'll be pretty too. Now, if you've been patient, this will come off very nicely. You just lift it with your spatula, 
don't burn your fingers and place it over carefully over your little form. And it makes a very nice cup. You have to be a little intrepid when you make things like this. Don't get nervous if a little crack forms like that. It's nothing. If it doesn't form a cup, then it's something. So we're ready to now let these cool and I'll show you what it looks like when they're filled with a delicious sorbet or an ice cream. Now, this dessert really does call for your prettiest plates. And we have grapefruit, blood orange, and apricot homemade sorbets. So we'll take a little bit of this blood orange. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful sorbet. Just one scoop is plenty. And for this plate, I think we'll do the apricot. So pretty. That one is the grapefruit. And there you have brandy snap cups. Easy to make, delicious to eat. Now, how many times have you broken into a fortune cookie and wished that it tasted better? Well, there's no reason any longer not to make your own fortune cookies. They're easy, they're fun, and you can put in the fortunes that you want your friends and your family to have. The dough is a tweel dough. We are going to add to a mixer four large egg whites. We want to break up those egg whites with a beater. And we're going to add one cup of super fine sugar. Super fine is granulated sugar ground really fine. And you beat this together just for 30 seconds, no longer, until it's kind of white and creamy. Now sift one cup of all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, and you add this to the egg whites. You should also have some butter. This is five tablespoons of butter, melted and cooled, and some almond extract. So we're gonna add the flour right to the eggs and sugar. Three tablespoons of heavy cream. I'm just gonna add this right into the melted butter. One, two, three. And one teaspoon or a scant teaspoon of almond extract. I don't like it too almondy. That's a half. I'll add a scant other half. And now make sure you scrape down your bowl. This is a very nice batter, very easy to make. And now add your liquid ingredients. And that's it. Don't overbeat. Very important not to get a lot of air bubbles in this batter. And remember the technique for cutting out a template for the leaf twill and the cigarette twill? Well, we have the same kind of template available on our website at marthastewart.com. And we have cut five inch circles out of that flexible cutting board. And so using the same technique, just spread that batter in the little mold, making it all the same thickness. It spreads very well. Gently take this to a baking sheet. And these little cutout molds can be used over and over and over again. Just wash them in hot water. These don't spread, so they can be placed where you have room on your silpat and use a silpat. It's very essential. Parchment paper just doesn't work as well as a silpat. And these go right into your 400 degree oven for six to seven minutes. So now I think we're ready. Oh yes. So this looks just about right. Use an offset spatula to loosen the cookie like that. Place your fortune. Be patient and good things will come. A slow rise gives good flavor. Baking will make your future sweet. Fold over. 
take it by the fold, just bend it over like that. And that will make a very nice looking fortune cookie. So here you have the perfect fortune cookie that tastes really good and has an excellent fortune inside. I hope you also enjoyed today's show all about tweels. And if you toil, you'll get some great tweels, all from Martha Bakes. Thank you.